How we doing, traders? Welcome to the SPACs Attack. How are we doing, traders? Welcome and welcome to the SPACs Attack, where we talk everything SPACs. So if you like that, hit the like button and let's get started today. What's going on, Chris? Hey, hey, how are we doing today, Matt? Hey, another day in paradise. I'm going to go ahead and hit the taking his back now. Let's get into some headlines of the day so that we can get into our interview. All right, guys. Yeah. So after the weekend, of course, returning to lots of notable headlines. We also have some deal announcements this morning and some rumors out there in SPAC land that we will get to. So up first, we have uh, Ride, R-I-D-E, Lordstown Motors. Want to make sure that this is on everyone's watch. Um, the company was the target of a short report last week. News out today, it looks like the Secretary of State from Ohio will be visiting the company. And then they also have earnings out this week. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, speculation with those fake um, deals and non-renewals from the company. But I think we're going to hear a lot more from the company this week. I do own shares of RIDE. Keep that one on your watch list as now, you know, we do have that buy on the dip opportunity possibly. Then we have desktop metal, that's ticker DM. So earnings announced today. Um, but the notable part for me was uh, not so much the earnings, but a new uh, uh, deal. So they announced a new healthcare business. Um, so they're going to use the additive manufacturing solution now in dentistry, orthodontics, dermatology, orthopedics, cardiology, and plastic surgery, where they're going to be able to, you know, print medical um, items to help grow in that space. So again, you know, going beyond the the manufacturing and the industrial industry now, we have desktop metal. So keep DM on your watch. And then we have NGA. So NGA merging with Lion Electric. This is a, a stock that I own. Um, shares are up today. We do have an event being held right now with the Canadian Prime Minister and the Prime Minister of Quebec. Um, it looks like they're going to have some announcement of a, possibly a new factory in Canada, um, you know, or get some new deals um, within uh, that country. So keep an eye out on NGA. Again, that's an ongoing event going on right now. Um, but I did see shares up significantly um, earlier today. Then we have NPA. So NPA set their vote date for April 1st. They also extended um, their deadline to reach a deal um, as that was coming closer to an end. So again, this is the 5G um, from space, AST mobile. Um, so keep an eye out on NPA as we now have, you know, that vote date set and we can move forward on that deal. Another uh, SPAC to watch is FMAC. This is one that I own. So first, Mark, um, I've had several rumors out there, nothing concrete, but that company, first, Mark, did file for a second SPAC, which we of course know, you know, that that could mean a deal is coming soon for the first SPAC from the company. So keep an eye out on FMAC, you know, with that news out that that second SPAC will be uh, coming soon. We have CCIV. I do own shares of CCIV, Churchill Capital, the Lucid Motors. So the shares were up today. Um, it was reported on CNBC today by Jim Cramer. Um, that he will be interviewing Lucid Motors on Mad Money tomorrow night. So again, normally we get that Kramer bump in the morning. Um, this one already moving, you know, on tomorrow's event just because Kramer is already, you know, highlighting the fact that he's going to have Lucid on there. Um, this will be an interesting one to watch because CNBC has done quite a few interviews, um, you know, with Lucid Motors. Uh, we've seen the CEO, you know, hint at some things during those interviews. 
And also we've seen Kramer kind of go back and forth on SPACs recently. So curious to hear his take on this company um, and what he has to say on CCIV tomorrow night on Mad Money. Then our movers on Friday, we had uh, TPGY up 13%, CIIC up 12%, BLSA up 7%, and GIK up 7%. I do own shares of GIK. And then also want to highlight, so PSTH, Pershing Square, of course, the largest SPAC out there. Um, Been rumored for a long time, uh, Stripe as the possibility of fintech company. Um, So it was announced over the weekend uh, that Stripe got new funding of $600 million, valuing the company at $95 billion. So Stripe is now the most valuable startup out there. Um, I'm thinking that no uh, traditional IPO or SPAC is anywhere in Stripe's near-term plans, which means, you know, given that high valuation of $95 billion, I think this one could be out of reach for PSTH now, as they would only own, you know, a small portion of that company and would have to get quite a large pipe to get that deal done. So again, not out of the realm of possibilities, but given, you know, this, this huge funding to support growth in Europe. And that new valuation, I just don't see a deal with Stripe likely. Um, So now PSTH shares down today and we'll probably start up the new rumor mill, um, you know, of a different company going public. And then speaking of rumors, we have a couple out there. We have eToro. So eToro, fintech company, um, you know, trading brokerage company is in talks uh, to go public via a SPAC at a $10 billion valuation. Um, that news is out from Calculist. Uh, again, this is an Israeli company. So, you know, keep an eye out on some of those SPACs, you know, targeting the fintech space or maybe targeting um, that, that country in particular. I know BTAQ is a SPAC that I own that I have mentioned before, targeting the Israeli market. Um, so definitely keep an eye out on that one and others. Then we have PBA. This is uh, the SPAC now rumored with Iron Source at a $10 billion valuation. That's coming from Bloomberg, that rumor. We have Virgin Orbit um, from Richard Branson and Virgin Company in talks with SPACs at a $3 billion valuation. No tickers mentioned in that report um, from the Wall Street Journal, but again, Virgin Orbit was linked previously to um, the Virgin uh, Group SPAC, VGAC, um, you know, so, and then they ended up with 23 and me. We do have a couple other Virgin Group SPACs out there, but also keep an eye on some of those SPACs that are targeting, you know, the space or um, aero, aerospace defense markets as maybe Virgin Orbit ends up being the target there. And then we turn to our deals this morning. We have RACA getting a deal with Point Biopharma. That's a next generation radio pharmaceutical company. Uh, Company is pre-revenue. This is done at a $639 million valuation. Then we have DFNS getting a deal with IronNet, which is a leader in defense and network detection industry, uh, done at almost a billion dollar uh, valuation. And they had revenue of $54 million in 2021 and $111 million in fiscal 2022 estimate, up 106%. um, Kind of a large valuation there. Um, given the size of the revenue and, you know, the, the growth already there. So we'll keep an eye out on that one. And then we have GNRS. Um, so this was one we mentioned on the Cannabis SPAC show, targeting the cannabis industry. So they announced a deal this morning for four cannabis companies. So that's Shango, the Health Center, Thera Plant, and True Harvest. So they now see fiscal 2021 uh, revenue of all the companies together of $158 million, up 91%. And 230 million up 45%. This one done at a 296 million valuation. Um, so when you look at that valuation compared to the revenue estimate, it actually looks kind of attractive. And this one not really moving on that announcement. So I know GNRS is on my watch, you know, looking at some of these cannabis exposed companies, especially out there in SPAC land. So keep an eye out on that one. And then we turn to our calendar. We do have a couple of votes this week. We have ROCH voting on that merger tomorrow. We have NBAC on the 17th and LOAC on the 17th. And then we had those earnings from Desktop Metal this morning. And again, as I mentioned, we have Lordstown Motors, uh, ticker RIDE, which I do own shares in, 
reporting on Wednesday, and I know everyone will be looking forward to seeing those, um, you know, given the short report out there. So that's what I've got for, um, you know, headlines, rumors, and deals out there, Mitch. All right. Well, there's a couple of deals out there, and definitely CCIV starting to get a little bit of move. We talked about that one on Friday. We said that it could potentially start getting a, a little bit of move there. I kind of like it when it went off close to that 20 level. Of course, that's what I was looking for, the pullback. And, and now it looks like it's just setting up to get back up there. And who knows? Maybe make all-time highs. We'll see what happens there. Um, take a look here at the Watts list before we get to our interview. We got a little bit of time, so let's go ahead and let's get into the Watts list. All right, guys, going to pull up the watch list here. Let's go ahead and look at some of these stocks that are moving. Uh, looks like we got NGA. Um, we already talked about that one, but chart looking good. Bounce off that 14, now up above that 20. Let's see if it holds 20 today. If not, it could get back down through the 20s, closer towards the 18. Oh, look. And while I say that, it cracks through the 20 there. So keep an eye on that one as it's breaking down through the 19 there. It looks, like that, it looks like that news is out, Mitch, on NGA. Yeah. Again, that event is going on right now. Um, I'm seeing a press release out about a new battery factory in Canada. Um, looks mm -hmm. like a new battery model every 11 seconds and a full battery pack every five minutes will be the first Canadian manufacturer of medium and heavy-duty vehicles to equip itself with its own automated battery. Um, you know, so again, no surprise that it's moving because now we have, you know, the, the electric vehicles and we also have that, that battery technology that they have themselves. So, you know, keep an eye on NGA. Uh, looks like, you know, today on that news, we could see a runner. Definitely, definitely. It looks like, uh, to me, since the drop came right after 10, I, I think people were a little bit maybe front running the event a little bit, but that can happen as traders. All right, let's keep going here. SSPK here up about 8% here. Let's look at the chart. Take a look here, see what we see. A nice bounce off of that 18, really getting strong in the 20s here. Now starting to come up towards a resistance in the 2350 area. Let's see what happens. Um, I'll take a look at this one, but this one looks like it just wants to keep on going. Uh, Aoni. We talked about that one. That's the Kathy buys. And I think people were buying the Kathy dip. So th this is what I could say about a a one. What what do you think? Yeah, you know, uh A1 again, yeah, it's been added to ARC a couple times, but you know, with desktop metal reporting this morning, um, you know, and looking at getting in that healthcare market, um, and kind of talking about the total addressable market for that additive manufacturing. I think AONE is, you know, a, a definitely a sympathy play off of desktop metal as well, um, you know, with that new 3D printing going forward. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on this one. I, I liked it when it was down near 12s and 11s, but it's, it's starting to make a move there. So a little bit too high for my price there. Uh, keep moving on here. What else we got? VLDR. Wasn't expecting to see this one up uh, 6%, but let's see where it is. Looks like it's getting down towards, you know, all-time levels for this one. You know, it's down there. It, it bounced off the support there at 12, now above 14, looking strong. I would look for another attempt to get it near 14, but it, it's not a bad-looking chart, but a bad turnaround there um, as people were looking at this one as probably being one of the best LiDAR companies. All right, let's keep let's keep rolling through here. What else we see? And we're seeing S racks with a bounce there. This is one that was interesting for us as we've gotten all the way back down uh, towards kind of these twelve dollar levels before this stock ripped up. Um, this is definitely one that I could see being added towards that Kathy uh, Kathy Wood Space ETF. Um, so definitely seeing the bounce off. I think investors kind of really thought of that the same as it got towards levels. Uh, back in December. So, 
All right, Chris, looks like we got our interview ready. Are you ready to go here? All ready to go. All right, let's get this started. Let's go ahead and pull the watch list off. Let's go ahead and bring our, our interview and get unlocking these specs. All right, guys, super excited. We have a busy week coming up this week. Lots of CEO interviews. So today on Monday, we start with one. We have the co-founder and CEO of Owlette. This is Kurt Workman. Owlette going public with Sandbridge Acquisition. That's ticker SBG. Welcome to the show, Kurt Workman. Thank you so much, Chris and Mitch, for having me. Appreciate it. Welcome to the SPACs attack. Well, I'll let Chris do some questions and uh, I'll be back. Sounds great. All right. Perfect, Kurt. So, you know, we're a, a SPAC focused show here. So the first question we ask, you know, on these acquisitions is, you know, um, a private company like Owlet, why the decision to go public via a SPAC over a traditional IPO? We were on the path to take the company public uh, anyways. We actually, Alex got a strong core growth business. We were uh, profitable in the back half of 2020. We've been growing over 50% per year for the last five years um, and uh, had really kind of built that financial discipline. We had you know, already started working with a, with a bank to walk down that IPO route. And uh, we met the team at Sandbridge and we liked that we felt like it brought together the best of kind of a, a high growth round and the ability to take the company public. Um, and, and Sandbridge specifically brings a lot of expertise in areas that are critical to outlets growth uh, opportunities. They're, they're highly experienced in brand and brand management, uh, which really matters in our category. They have extensive experience taking companies um, international uh, specifically to Asia. The founder of JD.com is on their advisory board, among others like Tommy Hilfiger and uh, CEO of Gucci and some of these, these big brands. Um, and then finally, there's some rare shareholder alignment in the deal. There's an 18-month lockup, 50% earnout on the, the sponsor shares. And so this is a, it was really kind of a, a rare opportunity. And we decided that that made a lot of sense for Outlet. It accelerated our pathway to, to going public with a great partner and kind of long-term long -term priorities. Perfect, yeah, I wanna dive into some of that international talk later on, but kind of a background on the company. So a digital nursery company, I'll let, um, you know, a parent myself, you know, I, I know the brand, I've heard of the brand, um, you know, very well known for, you know, the monitors and then that baby sock, um, you know, device as well. Uh, you co-founded the company. Walk us through the background of, you know, what was the decision like to create this company? And, and you know, was there was there just an unmet need there? And why Owlette? Of course. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. So I'm a dad. You probably guessed that. I have three beautiful children. And uh, I still remember that day when I brought my oldest son, Ashton, home from the hospital. And you walk outside of those hospital doors and for the first time you, re you realize it's all up to you. Like you are the caregiver, there's nobody else. And we were especially concerned because uh, my wife has had three heart surgeries. She has a congenital heart defect that, uh, that's, that's genetic. And so we were really worried that our kids might have the same issue. And I just remember wondering, how would I know if something was wrong? And uh, I think those are questions that every parent asks. Every parent one worries about their baby's safety, their health, their sleep. Um, and so I learned about this technology they use in the hospital called pulse oximetry. And this is pre kind of Apple Watch that now 92 million adults will have this on their wrist by 2022. Uh, and I was fascinated. I thought that's amazing that, that through light, you know, that just the shines through the skin, you can determine the baby's heart rate and oxygen levels. and uh, notify parents if they need to go check on baby. And so uh, we started to work on it and immediately there was pull from, from parents. It was, you know, really quickly became the most sought after product in the nursery. When we started, we actually got kicked out of Target stores doing customer research. And today it's the number one monitor at Target. And that's become the anchor for what we call the connected nursery ecosystem. So we've, we've already integrated the CAM, which is our first hardware integration, Dream Lab, which is really digi digitizing uh, sleep coaching and, and helping parents get their baby to sleep through the night. 
It's a software program that um, 91% of parents that use Dream Labs sleep through the night and in seven days. And we're leveraging, we've collected the largest data set of, of infant health that's ever been collected. And we believe that that will become the base to, to be able to close the loop at home for telehealth. Perfect. So, you know, I, I know you mentioned a couple areas there. Um, I see from the presentation, you know, Outlet sits at the center of consumer technology and health. Why is it so important to kind of bring that ecosystem together? You know, again, you mentioned yourself being a parent. Why all three together, you know, as Outlet here? You know, um, one of the things I realized is that, you know, you become a parents with very little training become medical caregivers overnight. You're the doctor, you're the nurse, you're the dietitian, the sleep trainer, the lactation consultant, like you, you do, you do everything. And uh, so you've got a consumer who's become a caregiver overnight. And that's why we believe you have to have the best of consumer experience. Products need to be intuitive and easy to use. Brand really matters. We invest in those areas. You need to bring together full stack technology and you make it extremely convenient. Everything connects into one mobile platform. And we've consumerized medical technology. We've given access to consumers to this technology that was traditionally only available in the hospital. Uh, and that's why that's why we believe that those those worlds kind of collide. And in order to really help parents answer this journey from conception to kindergarten, uh, you've got to sit at the center of those three three circles. Perfect. So, you know, you mentioned Target, um, you know, as one of the stores, number one um, monitor there. So, again, I see from the presentation, you know, number one in terms of market share for the monitor business. You know, can you talk again? That's your, you know, your your key component to the business currently. Why was monitors, you know, the important first step for Owlet? And, you know, what what in terms of market share can we continue to expect the, the lead going forward with new products? Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the parents rely on the Outlet Smart Sock unlike any other product in the nursery. It, it collects information about baby's health and sleep 10 to 12 hours per day. And so because of that, we've collected the largest data set of infant health. We sit upstream in that data collection, which is what allows us to drive intelligent action across these other products and, and services in the nursery, like we've done with the CAM and Dream Lab. Um, and so it becomes the uh, the base by which we can uh, really bridge the gap between the hospital and the home with telehealth. We believe that our data can be predictive. We just published a large study. Well, sorry, Cleveland Clinic uh, just pu published a large study around uh, infant cardiac issues, one of the largest studies ever done uh, using the outlet data. And um, we believe that that's just the, the beginning. There's a bunch of other publications that are coming out. Uh, we've submitted for FDA clearance back in 2019. And we believe that that data set will enable the future of telehealth at home and allow parents to get answers to those critical questions at home. We'll be able to do opportunistic screenings. And that's all part of kind of the future roadmap and what the, the smart sock and, and then eventually the, the outlet band, which is our product for pregnancy, will enable from a data perspective in the home. Perfect. So you mentioned the FDA 2019 so that outlet sock currently, um, you know, is is over the counter. Is that correct? Not FDA approved. Right. The smart sock is a consumer product, and then we submitted what's called a 510k to the FDA for a product called Baby Sat, which will be a medical device um, that can be uh, that high risk children or children who are sick that require medical monitoring can use. Can you walk us through a little bit? What's the expected timeline of that clearance? And how, um, you know, did you kind of base the financial projections for the company around that um, FDA approval? Yeah, you know, it's hard to say because it is up to FDA. They, they at the end of the day, they make the decisions. But um, we submitted back in 2019. We've worked through 75 questions with FDA. Uh, we've got one remaining uh, question with them that we're working through. But uh, we've completed all of the accuracy, clinical accuracy studies. Uh, safety studies, biocompatibility, human factors. Um, and so we believe that we're, we're really hopeful that it's soon. Um, and in terms of financial projections, we've been very conservative about uh, what we've baked into the financial perspective. From that perspective, we believe it's upside. You know, it's not until 2020, end of 2022, 2023, that we really start to see any meaningful revenue from that side of the business. But we, we're hopeful that we can, uh, we can 
accelerate that. Perfect. So, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the company's growth. Um, you know, I see four keys to, to the growth going forward for Owlette. And the one, you know, that I think everyone may be familiar with, especially during the pandemic, is we've seen the growth of telehealth. So can you kind of walk through, you know, how does Owlette position itself in the growing telehealth um, market? And what does that market opportunity kind of look like in terms of dollars? Yeah, there's 92 million healthcare visits in the first four years of life alone. That excludes pregnancy, which is the next, you know, we're launching the band, which is our pregnancy uh, tracker this, this year. But there's 92 million healthcare visits in the first year of life, first four years of life. And uh, what's really interesting about these visits is that, you know, the majority is it's different than like, my, right? Like if I get a fever, I don't go immediately into the doctor. But if my child gets a fever and it goes above 103, uh, it doesn't matter what time of day I'm going to go. I'm going to go check and make sure that that they're OK. And so there's a lot of utilization of healthcare in this early phase of life. A big reason why you end up taking your newborn baby to the ER in the middle of the night is because you just don't have access to that information and that data. Um, we're seeing a new trend with telehealth happen, especially among new parents with with COVID. Nobody wants to take their baby in for those uh, urgent visits if, unless it's really, really serious. And so the, the, we're seeing the, the adoption of telehealth accelerate. And uh, we, we believe that telehealth is becoming commoditized, meaning that you know, any doctor can use any platform and so can any consumer. So what really matters is who owns the relationship with the customer, who really can, uh, can, can engage with the customer. All it, parents are opening up the app eight times per day. We have data that can, uh, we believe can predict when a baby might need a telehealth consult. And uh, so we believe Alit's in this perfect position to, to rather than having the parent go into the ER in the middle of the night, you know, that morning say, hey, you know, looks like, you know, Jimmy might need a little bit of help. Do you want to talk to one of our professionals? And we think that's a big opportunity. That's phase one. We'll integrate a partner. Phase two, as we get uh, FDA clearances and we start to build some of these opportunistic screenings is, is to be able to uh, actually help doctors close the loop at home and leverage the data to diagnose. Perfect. Um, so, you know, you, you touched on it briefly earlier, international, um, which sounds like, you know, part of the reason why the SPAC was chosen, Sandbridge Acquisition, ticker SBG, um, you know, talk a little bit about Owlet right now. Where, um, you know, are your sales currently based and how do you grow this brand internationally, um, you know, into new markets? Currently, we're uh, we're United States, Canada, and Australia. We've just started <clears throat> scaling into Europe um, this year, and so it's a big, big growth area for us. There's more babies born in Europe than the United States. Uh, there's four times as many babies born in Asia uh, than the United States, and so <clears throat> it's a it's a big international market. It's a big opportunity. Uh, you know, what we'll do is we'll, we'll start with Europe, we'll, we'll expand into Europe, and then we'll start with Korea and Japan, and then eventually work our way into China. Perfect. And then, you know, turning back to the U.S., um, you know, home market, uh, in the presentation, it talks about, you know, growing distribution. So already in some Walmart stores, Best Buy, Target, and available on Amazon, um, but mentioning future opportunities of, you know, additional Walmart stores, Costco and Sam's Club, you know, Outlet's already an award winner. It's a well-known brand. How do you, you know, kind of break through the entry here to get into additional stores and could going public, you know, really help um, with that process? Yeah, you know, one of the stats we love to share is that, you know, Outlet's market penetration is actually deeper in middle America than the coast still, which is really interesting. Nebraska, for example, 20% of babies born in Nebraska use an Outlet smart sock, which is pretty incredible. If you were to extrapolate that across the United States, that alone would drive over a billion dollars in revenue with our existing products. Um, so there's a big opportunity to just deepen penetration. Uh, we did a test with Walmart last year that went really well. We exceeded sell through expectations by 50%. Um, we know that Outlet resonates in middle America and uh, we actually do fairly well on the income distribution. Uh, and so that's a, it's a really exciting opportunity. We're in about three and a half thousand doors right now. We believe there's another 5,000 doors to move into with Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club. And then eventually as, as we start to get clearances and integrate telehealth, we think pharmacy could be a, a big opportunity as well with Walgreens and CVS. 
Perfect. So yeah, lots of exciting opportunities to gain in the U.S. and internationally. Um, I want to turn a little bit to to the financials. Um, again, you know, you talked about some conservative estimates here. You know, without the FDA really priced in for a couple of years on that smart sock. So I see 2021 revenue estimate of 107 million, and then 2024 it looks like we really see a ramp up to 51 million. And 2025, one billion dollars. You know, can you walk us through why the ramp up in 2024 is that just the culmination of you know international telehealth and everything hitting? Um, how can we kind of uh, look at the projections going forward? Yeah, that's right. One thing that I'll note is that Outlet's been an extremely capital efficient organization. We've raised only 48 million dollars to date. We have 20 on the balance sheet. So. We've really only deployed $30 million and we're growing 50% year over year at $100 million run rate today. Uh, with this SPAC, we're bringing in $325 million to the business that we're gonna be able to deploy to, to drive growth. Um, and so that's a big opportunity for this category. We know it's an $80 billion market. You can see that by 2025, we're still only like just, just a bit over 1% penetrated into the market. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity to grow. We have a great disciplined organization and uh, we're bringing in a lot more capital than we've had to, to date. And so I think there's a lot of growth ahead of us to take the, the, the kind of organic growth rate from 50% uh, and, and actually increase that with some investments, some purposeful investments. So really excited about that. Uh, to, to your point, yes, it is. You start to see international grow. You start to see as we integrate telehealth, that lifetime value of a customer will more than double uh, along with some of our other services. Um, and then just deepening penetration. Again, if we just continue this playbook and we continue to see these tipping points happen, like we're seeing in Nebraska and Louisiana and some of these, these early states where we've done a great job partnering with, with parents and organizations in those communities to spread the word about Outlet, we really believe that even just that could drive a billion dollars in revenue. But there's, there's several shots on goal and several ways to win and, um, and, and a, a, a really significant investment into the category. Perfect. Um, you know, and again, I know you probably can't touch on specifics here or any names, but, you know, being such a large player in, in the, you know, the digital nursery market, and we're seeing the growth of telehealth, we're seeing the growth of smartwatches, um, you know, smartphone apps, um, you know, has there been any discussions, you know, with some larger companies to, to partner, um, you know, to kind of, you know, grow together um, in that healthcare market? Yeah, we, we did a study with one of the largest payers in the country. Amazon has invested into the business. Um, you know, pediatrics is a is a big uh, space. Um, and, you know, if you look at like healthcare spend by age, it's bimodal, a lot at the beginning of life and then a lot at the end of life. And uh, so there's a lot of people that are that are interested in the category. Uh, we've had several conversations with some of the biggest players. And so I think we'll see some interesting partnerships over the next few years. All right, I'm gonna hop in here with a question of my own here. One one uh, part that stands out to me on the presentation deck is kind of the revenue here and also the revenue growth expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up here so that we can see it. So, you know, of course, one of the things that really stands out to me is that 52% uh, kind of that revenue growth there. L look, look at comparable to the other companies there. Um, if you're looking at the high growth sector on the right hand side with Beyond Me, Fresh, Fresh Pet, kind of these newer companies that are really breaking the, the kind of the limits on growth. And then you see 52 percent definitely standing out to me. Explain me a little bit more how this growth is determined and how do you guys see yourself keep, keep these levels up over 50 percent? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Outlet has a strong core growth business already. We've been very capital efficient. I think our cost per acquisition is about $30 um, on, you know, over $400 of AOV right now. So really efficient marketing to, to customer spend. We're not buying customers at this point. We're seeing really strong organic referral. The number one predictor of whether or not you're an Outlet customer is if you know somebody who's an Outlet customer. And so, um, you know, we've got really great organic growth that's been over 50% year over year for the last five years. So that's, you know, we believe that trend will continue, especially as we take in 
um, $325 million to the SPAC to invest in the category and really grow out our product suite. We'll have more products to offer. That CAC to LTV ratio is going to continue to, to, to improve. Um, and so we, we believe that 50% is on the low end of what's possible here. All right, and, and the last big, yeah, I'm sorry, a big TAM that's that's hyper fragmented. We're, we're you know you can see the TAM penetration is still so low out to 2025. Um, so we believe all those things come together to make a big opportunity. And this space is frankly it's unserved and it's it's overlooked by by most uh, by most tech companies. Yeah, you know it's an interesting field that you guys are getting into, and and it comes into a whole bunch of different plays. Um, can you tell us really uh, how how much faster has the pandemic pushed these kind of numbers? Um, because of course, you know, the pandemic definitely changed the environment. I think it changed it overall for the next five to 10 years. So how has that been played into these kind of numbers on the presentation deck? You know, there's that, I think that like famous saying that puppies and babies are, are like the two areas that aren't disrupted by, by pandemics. What we've seen, we haven't seen a, a massive change in demand you know i think outlets kind of always been seen as a need to have so those who are aware of of our ecosystem uh generally uh you know that that's the bigger factor um, but what we are seeing is is a, an increased demand for telehealth and for connecting the dots between healthcare and the home and we believe we're sitting on the data set to be able to do that so i think that's the that's a, a big tailwind right now that's driving uh, a lot of our future plans and some interesting partnerships Perfect. I got a couple more questions here. Um, I want to touch on, you know, competition. So again, you know, number one market share in monitors, um, you know, but we, we do know there's some other companies out there with monitors. Um, you know, again, they don't seem as high tech or as involved as the ones from Outlet, but just talk a little bit about, you know, who do you see as your main competitors? And, you know, do you think you're going to be able to maintain that lead over them uh, going forward? Yeah, Outlet's really the first company to build a true ecosystem around our data set with the camera and with Dream Lab and with the SOC. And we're expanding on that rapidly. And I think the ecosystem creates a real competitive moat because it makes it harder for customers to switch platforms. We're seeing 40% of our customers opt in to buy the cam. 91% um, of our customers that use Dream Lab sleep through the night in seven days. And uh, it's all getting stronger and stronger uh, in terms of it, the integration. And uh, you know the data makes it harder for competitors to match value. Alice collected the largest data set of infant health uh, in the market. We're by far the largest company in the space. Um, and as we continue to integrate these nodes, it, that data sets become becomes extremely valuable to launch new features to make our uh, our products better. We're on like the fifteenth version of our machine learning algorithms, and so products just keep getting better and better. Even if you can match the hardware, which you know, we have 24 patents in that that full stack of, of technology, um, then you, you need the data set to match the value. And so there's this really interesting competitive moat that's building rapidly here. I think we, we're more concerned about some of the telehealth companies, right? As, as that's the, the next big step for Outlet uh, coming into this space. Um, and we think we've got a really, really great kind of right to win in this space. But uh, that's that's those are the companies that we look at the most right now. All right. So I got one last question. I'm seeing in the chat a little bit similar question here, but it's a question about the data sharing and how your safety kind of works with the platform. Can you explain us how that works, Kurt? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a dad. I have three kids. So, you know, we started this company because of, you know, making sure kids are safe and healthy and, and secure. And so we take that very seriously. Um, you know, all of our, uh, our companies, GDPR compliant, uh, we do a lot of external security audits to make sure that our systems are, are robust and safe. And uh, for example, like with the camera, we use the same type of encryption technology that, that banks use. And so we're really careful about uh, how we store the data and protect the data. Uh, on top of that, um, you know, the data is really only used for research purposes. It makes the products better. We actually continue, up to continue updating the products every month. Um, and then we use that for research like we've done with Cleveland Clinic and uh, some other big other big hospital uh, networks to help improve infant health. And parents are really excited about that, the fact that 
um, you know, Outlet's mission is to improve infant health and safety. Perfect. I got one more question, you know, before we let you go here, Kurt, um, you know, with the farewell. So you mentioned profitability in the second half of the last year. Um, you know, I, I look at the presentation and it looks like maybe we're a couple years away from full year profitability. You know, when do you see that happening and what needs to happen in terms of revenue and those growth pillars to really hit the, the profitability full year level? Yeah, I still remember the month that we hit. It was like sort of our first profitable month and everyone was cheering. You know, it was like a big deal because uh, we've been we've been capital efficient. We really got the business um, into a, under good control and uh, and we were able to continue growing over 50 percent a year. So that's really great. But there's a big opportunity here, a much bigger opportunity than where we're at today. And so uh, as a business, we've decided that we want to go back into the red. We want to invest in in gaining market share, expanding our product portfolio and really becoming the leader in the connected nursery that's going to drive the, the telehealth for pediatrics. So that's that's the plan. Uh, 2024 is our first profitable year. And then and then uh, 2025, you see uh, really healthy margins. Perfect. And then, Kurt, before we let you go, I, I want to pull up this comment from our chat um, from One Oak Hookah. Uh, you know, talking about using the outlet since 2017, currently using it on our five-week-old really helps you sleep better knowing the smart sock is on them. You know, again, you're a dad, you created this company. What do the awards and, you know, kind of the comments like that from parents, what do they mean to you, you know, outside of the the public company and the, you know, the investment side of things? I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, that means everything. You know, at the end of the day, like businesses have ups and downs and, you know, you've, you've got investors, like just, just everything that comes with running a business. What really motivates, I think, and, and glues our team together are comments like that and, and the, the many parents that have reached out and said, hey, because we had the information we had, we were able to check on baby when they really needed it. And that, I mean, that just puts everything into perspective. So thanks for sharing that. Of course, of course. Our, you know, our chat loved you. I, again, I'm, I'm a dad. I, I know the brand. I know we have lots of parents that watch the show and I, I'm sure they know Owlette. And if they didn't before, hopefully they do now. Um, you know, so again, joining us on the show was co-founder and CEO of Outlet, Kurt Workman, going public with Sandbridge Acquisition, that's ticker SBG. Big thank you, Kurt, for joining us on the show and taking the time out of your busy schedule. Thank you so much. No, I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll see ya. All right, guys. Well, you guys heard it first here on the Specs Attack. So definitely, definitely, guys, smash the like button if you got something out of that interview. You know, this is what we do it for, guys. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, some of them that have kids, you know, might have known the company. But there's a lot of people out there that might have never heard of this company before. And especially with, a, with you know, with the name Outlet, unless you kind of know what the brand's about, it's a little bit harder to know that it was about babies. But once you do, you realize, hey, man, the technology these days isn't what I grew up with. <laughs> right? Or it isn't what the parents grew up with. And so a lot of it's going to be also taken in and realizing that there's a lot of better ways to manage things nowadays, especially time efficiency and, and taking care of things and keeping an eye on things. You know, we all got, I think, a more active life. And then I would say that old generations, even though old generations are going to come after me for this one, but you know, there is, there is that active uh, kind of aspect of life now where y usually you have two parents working, two parents doing all this, trying to balance everything. And so items like this technology like this really just takes an ease and, and helps you do your everyday kind of responsibilities. Um, what do you think about the interview, Chris? Yeah, you know, uh, again, uh, as a dad, you know, Kurt hit it on the nose. Um, you know, I can say myself, you, you bring those kids home from the hospital. You, you don't have a lot of training, right? You're, you're not a doctor. Um, you're not a trained professional. And here you are, you know, putting these babies to sleep, um, you know, and there's a lot of anxiety, nervousness. And, you know, so these monitors, this, this outlet, um, you know, sock monitor, you know, with the baby's heart and different things like that you know, it, it really can provide, you know, that that ease and that, you know, sense of, you know, 
knowing that everything is okay. And the key here for me was this growth, right? So you have Owlette, you know, which was once a baby monitoring company now turning to that digital health ecosystem. So telehealth, you know, I, I didn't even have it in my notes, but we heard him mention pharmacy, right? You know, so connecting that, um, you know, you have the potential for partnerships with smartwatches and other health companies. And then that international growth, right? That's part of the reason why they chose a SPAC and why SBG, you know, Sandbridge acquisition, you have, I think he said the someone from the JD.com board, you know, with that experience in Asia, you also have Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Hilfiger is part of this, um, you know, this SPAC and he obviously knows how to grow a brand internationally. So to me, I think choosing a SPAC was a wise decision. And the other thing I liked was, you know, talking about profitability. So rather than just focusing 100% on profitability, they're, they're going to put money back into the business to grow, right? To focus on that long, long-term potential, um, you know, with that international and the, and the telehealth. So to me, that's a positive sign, you know, to, to not worry about profitability right now and, you know, focus on growing that TAM going forward. What, what do you think, Mitch, about, you know, the, the revenue growth and the profitability? Well, I just point at this, you know, and, and I'll point it out on their investor deck. This What this is, guys, is their future product opportunities and room to grow. So the, the kind of in the market is the kind of this orange color, like the smart sock. And, and you can look at the Dream Lab, the CAM, and, and then you can also start looking at what they see in the near future. So they're talking about the Smart Sock Plus. Um, they're talking about more telehealth, baby sat, um, you know, over the counter sock there, um, and, and looking more into sound machines. So there's a lot of potential products they're, they're working on. And this just to me, seems like a long-term opportunity into a big massive market that wasn't capitalized on technology for the last let's say 50 years and so because of that not a bad not a bad market uh whether whether it be this company or, or another i think at least in the industry there's definitely some potential but wanted to give a shout out to george Right down here, it says he's a new father and loves the product, giving us a little bit of a tip there. Hey, appreciate it, George. Hope you got something out of that uh, interview, other than just the, that it's your product, but uh, we, we hope that you enjoyed that. All right, guys, let's see what else we got out here. Let's get into maybe some stocks of the day. I'm, I'm seeing the market uh, is heading a little down. Let's, let's, take, let's take a look. Let me see if the market is heading a little down. I don't see too much. I think it's just a pullback kind of sideways kind of day, but you never know what can happen on these days. Um, anything you want to talk about specifically, Chris? No, you know, same same tickers we mentioned in the middle. I'm seeing NGA up 14% now. Um, you know, a couple SPACs up in that 5 to 6% range, but otherwise there isn't a ton of movement. Um, you know, ride up a couple percent. Again, I think that's one to, to watch this week, you know, with that short report out there. Um, you know, the Secretary of State from Ohio visiting the facilities today, and then they have earnings on Wednesday. Um, so I think we're going to get a lot more news out from Lordstown Motors. And, you know, we, we've seen a couple SPACs uh, become the target lately of these short reports. Um, you know, so it's important to kind of dive into them, you know, look at the bull and the bear case, look at the positives and the negatives, know where those sources are coming from. You know, and, and if you're afraid of, you know, too much of a, a fall um, with your SPAC, you know, make sure you're watching your, your levels, possibly setting, you know, uh, limits on your shares, um, you know, with the ticker like RIDE, in that case, falling, you know, double digits last week. So just be aware of what's going on out there. But otherwise, yeah, I'm not seeing a ton of, of movement from any of the big names today. Yeah, it's been a little tough, you know, just not seeing anything moving. But at the end of the day, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on the market, see what's going to go on. A couple that have been looking really good, of course, RSI and GNOG. Those charts looking great, at least from what I'm seeing right here. Um, and then we can take a look at some other ones being mentioned. I did see a lot of people start loading the boat in BFT. Um, and the reason why is, I mean, look at this chart. It's very symmetrical, um, going sideways. 
um, giving you a, a kind of support level here to go off of near the 1450s. You're seeing a lot of people into this one. I want to see if this one rockets off. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one, see if it gets some movement. Uh, that's BFT. Uh, another one that I, I'm seeing up today that's going to be interesting that got real cheap again was this TSIA. I know a lot of people got into this one after the Ch Chamath comments, but man, this one pulled back all the way to 11, really giving you a chance to get in this one. Now up at 13, hanging out. What do you think about this one, Chris? Yeah, you know, TSIA, Latch, um, Chamath on the pipe, you know, it, it's a very interesting play because it's that software as a service model um, going forward, you know, connecting um, apartments and, and homes and, you know, providing that incremental revenue. So it's definitely been on my watch, um, you know, since that deal was announced. I, I like their revenue model and their, you know, their platform for growth going forward. And I think it's one that kind of just fell under the radar. Um, you know, it wasn't as attractive um, of a target, um, you know, when it was first announced. All right, guys. So I'm pulling up Sandbridge here because someone's mentioning. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Are, are we talking about the same spec here? Yes, you are right. My fried chicken, man. You fry up some chicken and you eat those tendies today because you are correct, my friend. This is down to $9.99. Has a low in November at $9.65. So I think that's kind of like your bottom or your line in the sand um, if you want to risk off of here. But not a bad not a bad move there. It's gone up to a high of what do we got here? Eleven fifty six. And with that growth long term, you guys saw it on the financials. At least the fundamentals make sense. I can tell you I'm not the biggest fundamental guy, but at least the fundamentals make sense for this company. So not a bad not a bad option here. I might take a look to see in the next couple of days if I can get it uh, somewhere near here a little bit cheaper. But it, it looks interesting, SBG there. And fried chicken, you are right, my friend. Yeah, you know, under $10, it, it looks extremely attractive. You know, I – I don't buy um, shares of companies, you know, the day we do the interview. So not going to add shares of SBG today for full disclosure, but we'll be looking at this one going forward. I, I did like the interview. I like the long-term growth. And to me, you know, when you look at that chart and how it was trading under 10 for a while uh, with Tommy Hilfiger being attached, I think there was a lot of, you know, talker that maybe it was going to end up being a, a retailer or a clothing company, you know, going forward, because that's what he's got experience with. But to me, you know, this is digital health. Digital health is one of the fastest growing markets out there. And when you heard him talk about, you know, telehealth, pharmacy, and all this stuff connected, I, I think maybe the, the growth is being underestimated at that $10 level here. A good addition here by Thomas, letting us know that SBG gives half warrants also. Um, so half warrants is pretty good. You don't see that too too common anymore. You see these fourths, the sixth, soon to see a twelfth. <laughs> it, it'll happen sooner or later, guys. It will, All right. for sure. All right, Carl, Carl here talking about THCB. What's up with this one, my man Chris? Yeah, so THCB, this is uh Microvast, the, the battery company. Um, so I'm guessing this one fell a little. So remember that Microvest, you know, this was a, a rumor for a long time. Then they got the definitive agreement and it shot up. And then the other reason it spiked um, a couple weeks ago was remember that they have a deal in place with Oshkosh. So Oshkosh landed that USPS um, next generation vehicle deal. Mm. So it was kind of assumed that Microvest was going to get, you know, a large contract for that. Well, then Congress is now blocking the Oshkosh deal, and they're taking another look at it, which is why you see workhorse shares start to move a little bit. So I think there's some concern that if Oshkosh doesn't get that deal, you know, Microvest doesn't end up, you know, winning um, part of that contract, which, again, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that's like a game changer. But, again, it is news and noteworthy to where people may, you know, just be taking profits at, at that level. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, you can clearly see off the weekly the 14 support here and then 13 next level. So that's kind of the area where I would look at this one. But it is interesting. You know, it has had some volume, but I would look for to have some volume down here during 
near 14s, 13s, at least technically wise to see that it's ready to shoot right back up. Um, but you got to keep an eye on. There's a bunch of these battery plays kind of moving up and down. Uh, RMO, one that I got stopped out on, moving up also today. Up there now to back to 14. And sometimes why you got to attack those weekly lows, guys, because I was looking at this one on a daily. But if I would have been attacking this one on a kind of weekly look, I could have gone off of this kind of low right here. And, and then giving myself a really tight risk to reward there and looking to make it right back up there towards, let's say, a resistance of 2250. That's kind of the area where I'm looking at, but definitely a big green bar on the weekly. And that's called a bullish engulfing candle right here, guys. Whenever you get a green candle here to eat that last red candle and then why it eats it because it's bigger. And then it also determines a change of trend which is with strong volume what you want to see is a gain of volume and that's what you see here 33 going to 35 now you just want to see kind of these 1250 hold if it does pull back on the weekly all right so let's uh one that was mentioned by carl last one let's go into one more here guys um you see anything that stands out to you here in the chat you like chris you want to um, no, I mean, I'm seeing some non-specs uh, mentioned out there, but a lot of talk about SBG. Um, this one's an interesting. Tom, Tom, let's take a look at it for you. Uh, AEVA changing over from IPV. Um, interesting chart. Let's take a look here, how it's been trading on the day. And what has it been doing, guys? I, I don't want to say it, man, but is this common? You tell me, guys. You do the research, go look at it. You guys tell me if this is common. When you see the changeover, what happens most of the time? I don't want to say, it, man, but it, yeah, it, it, the chart know, says and, it all. And again, there, there's several LIDAR companies that have gone public via SPAC, and they all have kind of followed that pattern of you know falling after going public. So, so keep an eye on that pattern, uh, you know, going forward. And again, you know, there, there are a lot of publicly traded LIDAR companies now, and I think they kind of need to sort themselves out. Um, you know, who's going to be the leaders? Who's going to be the laggards? So, you know, pay attention to some of those deal announcements and partnerships um, with the LIDAR companies going forward. All right, guys. So definitely stay with us if you guys want to see some more SPACs attacks. So definitely hit the like Let's keep going through. So up next, we got the Power Hour. Um, let, let's go ahead and see what they got on Power Hour, who they got on today. Uh, let me see if I can see who, who we got on today here. Uh, it's looking like there's – I don't see too many – guests there so i'll have to take a look there a little bit more but definitely guys catch power hour it's coming on next at 12 o'clock in one minute you don't got to go anywhere just stay here click the thumbnail and you'll get right over all right guys so definitely stick with us we'll continue bringing you more and more we got some great great shows the rest of the week um definitely tomorrow guys we'll be starting up at 11 15 so if you guys get here at 11 don't be too mad at the women We'll see you at 11.15. Like always, guys, SPACs attack, baby. When you're having some issues to end the show, Smash that like button. We'll see you next time, guys.